Uh, I've seen a lot of changes in this community. I'm happy for many of the changes that I have seen. But um, there, there is room for more change. And I find the difficulty that I am discussed with in the black community is this. Um, I was, I founded the African American Historical Museum. I founded it. I saved materials and sacrificed for 35 years. I was able to get the building for the Reverend Bledsoe for the Ministerial Alliance and to move in to do all the things that I have done and I had collected. Well, it, it's a good thing, but I was locked out of the museum in February, on February the 18th. I went to go in on a Monday morning to write a story about the victory that we had at the library on the vote which was 64 to 19 for the new board to come in, which was just run over and ignored completely. Well, nevertheless, when I went to go in that Monday morning, I found out I was locked out. And I've been locked out ever since then. I went in on Be A Tourist In Your Own Hometown, and um, I took my family pictures that were irreplaceable, and I was approached at that time by the gentleman who said, uh, you have no business here. Uh, I said, I don't. He said, no. I said, well, so happens I am here. So that did make a difference. I am here. Uh, you have no right to take anything in here. Nothing in here belongs to you. And I said, well, it so happens that everything belongs to me. Well, I took my family possessions, and I, I did leave. But nevertheless, uh, the thing that disappointed me more about that, and Eric Hackley said to me one day, well, Mrs. Stith, you know, you can do this and you can do that. And I looked at Eric, and how well did he know how my heart was that day? Because I felt that I had established this in the community, and the community did not come to my rescue. They did not stand behind me. Only one black minister came to my rescue that day. I heard nothing else from the community. Everybody that I read into, they were willing to pray for me and all that kind of, you know, thing like that. But I needed more than prayer. I needed action. I needed people to stand behind me. So I said, you know, I'm 85 years old. I am 85 years old, but I bet I could outdo most of you guys here today. So far as work, research, and things like that is concerned, because that is my passion, that is my life. I did a splendid job, and I'm still able to do a splendid job. But I used to say to my husband all the time, what would happen if I died before my work was finished? He said to me, you know, Han, when you die, your work is finished. So when I got locked out of that museum, I didn't know it, but maybe my work was finished. And um, the, the thing that I am so, so afraid of, like Eric said, nobody recorded the stories. I wrote 160 stories on black people in Fort Wayne. I got a little book, and I turned in those stories for the black, for the, uh, for the Fort Wayne new history book we have. Had I not turned in all of those stories and all those inf that information, there would have been no history of blacks in Fort Wayne. But Eric, I did write 160 stories, and there are some of those stories in red binders over to the museum. But I am not welcome there. Nobody has stood behind me trying to get me in there. But you know what? Things happen, and we don't realize at that time, maybe it was for the best, because I have found peace, and I have left a legacy to Fort Wayne. I just hope it's not lost. That's all. Well, wait just a minute, wait just a minute here. First of all, the legacy is not lost at all, and I'm glad to know that, that I, I knew that you had done that, and a lot of times when I say things, I'm not referring to you, but generally speaking, there's nothing done here. And, uh, but one question, you, you said something here that really jumped out at me here. Uh, first of all, to make a correction, you had a ton of support out here, because I ride these buses everywhere, and folks with all the buses, uh, no, they were on your side. All you had to do was just do a Malcolm X and just say, come on. And you would have had uh, more support. But I think you're correct. You know, why is that? Why do we 
um, when, when we're behind closed doors, we're rallying, 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 and when you say charge, ain't nobody around you. That's right. That's right. I don't know, but that's been a typical thing that has happened in Fort Wayne, and I think that's why we have not progressed as a race of people in this community as as much as we should have, because we should have uh, own more restaurants, we should own more stores. Just look around and see what we own. I say Mr. Hawkins here, he has a restaurant, and he knows how difficult it is with us patronizing each other. Um, it's just something because the other person, the water is colder, you know, and their food is hotter, hotter, and everything they've got is much better than what we have as a race of people. So that's why we patronize other places. My husband was heating and plumbing contractor in Fort Wayne for 37 years. Do you know that 99% of his business was other and not us? So that's just some of the things that our people need to be educated to patronize, to work with, to trust one another and to work together because that's the only way we will ever progress. That's the only way we will ever climb and reach our full potential. Let me ask you this now. All right. We've been free 150 years. And what you just described um, is a mindset that, you know, that, I mean, I don't want to say the term, the term Willie Lynch, but I have to. I mean, the, the uh, conditioning that we've had over the years, we have to break that at some point. I mean, it can be broken. I mean, it has to be done now. I mean, it took us 150 years to get like this, and hopefully it won't take us 150 years to correct this. So I think that things are ready to change. Uh, what can we do immediately? I mean, what do, what do you see that, that, that we can do you know, and who can lead this, or is that going to come from our own internal spirit? Oh, tell everybody, the greatest helping hand, everybody remember this as long as you live, the greatest helping hand is the one at the end of your own arm, okay? We need to become educated. We need to work together to educate ourselves, to educate our children. That's to be our door that's going to open the door for us is education. Black people have to stop thinking about slavery. My parents, great-grandparents were slaves. I feel sorry for them and their suffering. But I am certainly glad that I got on the boat to come to America because I have been taught all my life that every opportunity there is mine too. I think of this country as a big apple pie and you put that apple pie in front of me, you don't need to worry, I'm gonna get my peace. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna be struggling, I'm gonna do my best to be a good citizen and get my share of that pie because we earned it, we deserved it. Everything here is just as much mine as it is anybody else's. I'm not waiting for a handout. I don't want a handout. But I want the opportunity, and if I get the opportunity, we as black people have to go forward. We cannot drown in slavery and what happened yesterday. That's over. Yesterday is gone, but tomorrow will surely come, and we have to be prepared to fight those battles, whatever it is. Our children need to be educated. Our, our, we need to take possession. We need to love and work together and cooperate with each other. So that's how we are going to get ahead is to become educated, to stop all of this shooting and this killing and things like that. Education, working together and loving each other, taking advantage of the opportunities that are available is how we are going to get ahead. Of course, God has given us all strength and ability and an intellect. You know, we have an intellect just as well as anybody else's. Our intellect is not inferior to anybody else's. Don't let anybody tell you that or tell your children. Or they're not as good as anybody else because they are. So we as a race of people have to work together better, get up off our knees, and if God gives us the ability to act, we pray to God, he gives us the strength to do, then we gotta get up off our knees and do.